This exclusive interview you're about to watch is amazing and may change your life. It's changed mine. It's a true testimony of a man who went to heaven. Trust me, it's amazing. But for context, I need to quickly tell you how it came about. The American author, Philip Gabbard, featured in this exclusive interview, he and I met during a book interview I conducted with him about two years ago. His books are great, and he was a nice man, a great interview, and a pleasure to meet. That was that. On September 30, 2020, the author reached out to me and requested if I could interview him again to discuss an event that happened in his life. I gladly accepted, and we scheduled the recording. I had no idea what we were going to discuss prior to this recording. This interview is visceral and raw and 100% life-altering. This will not be the last time I have with this author. Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comments below after the interview. Without further ado... Here's the interview. Book Biz Podcast brings you Philip Gavard for the second time. Philip, thanks for being on the show. Hey, thanks for having me, Michael. No worries. What uh, what have you been up to? How are things? You know, it's been busy. It's uh, it's been a interesting period. Um, I kind of feel like the that muse in me is back, and um, I had some events that um, I'm sure we'll we'll get into here in a few minutes. Yeah, no worries. So for my audience, uh, we've done an interview with Philip uh, probably about a month ago uh, where we deep dived into Philip's past, his present, and uh, what Philip's up to. So Philip is the author of two books, uh, This Day and Thrivation, um, business owner, media agency, ad man, entrepreneur, um, all things that. But we're here to talk about something a little bit different and an experience that happened to Phil quite recently. So Phil, tell me about your recent experiences. Thanks, Michael. And if I if I need to go back in time a little bit, um, uh, I, I am dealing with a, a, a death, a recent family death uh, of my brother. And to back that story up a little bit, um, uh, this is a, a brother of mine that I'm, you know, obviously very close with. Uh, but even more so after he experienced um, uh, the death of both of his children in the last three years, and um, it affected me profoundly, and I, I wrote about those deaths in Thrivation, and I spoke to, you know, a connection that he and I had um, through this experience, um, one of which was I talked to him every day um, since his oldest son had died uh, through suicide, and, you know, that I was just concerned for his well-being. Um, and you could only imagine how I felt um, a year and a half later after his second son, his only remaining son, uh, was killed in a motorcycle accident. And I, I just thought I was going to race back to Arizona and find my brother dead. Um, and he persevered. Um, and as tough as that can be, I have no idea uh, what a parent grieves with the loss of a son or two sons or your only children. And to survive them, but there's something that seems wrong about that order of things. And so my brother and I were very, very close. Um, and then on August 21st, um, uh, I found out from my son, Grayson, um, who discovered him uh, dead in his house um, on August 21st. And um, I, I, I'm, I'm still not sure how to reconcile all of it, Michael. I've got not not much to add. I don't have much experience on that, but I I, I do know we, we've been connected for a little bit, and uh, I do remember the passing of uh, your brother's first son uh, a year and a half yeah. ago, and then yeah, the passing of his other son, and then the passing of your brother. So I am aware that you've dealt with um, three very close, you know, the death of two of your nephews and and your brother. Well, in addition to, I lost my mother on uh, April 9th of this year as well. So. I, I think the point in the story that I that I really am am working through in my mind is an event that happened, Michael. And so I, being as close as I was with my brother Cliff, um, I raced over to Arizona and um, I began to deal with, you know, taking care of his household and wrapping everything up. There's no next of kin other than myself and my brothers and sisters. Um, and it, it was just a really tough period.
period uh, where we had to really throw away a lifetime of memories um, that were collected over the years. And uh, we worked for about 10 days uh, or so doing that. But um, something interesting happened, and, and this is what I wanted to really share and chronicle with you and your audience. Um, just be, and truthfully, because I felt really, really confident in, in your capabilities to listen and understand and, and as I work through these things, but also to, you know, kind of stand as evidence is that, uh, you know, uh, things happen even unexpectedly. So as I was dealing with the death on September 7th, my wife had scheduled me for a therapy session um, with a, a healer, uh, uh, a, a therapist of sorts. Um, I'm, I'm not an avid follower of chakra healers or energy healers, but um, uh, Miguel is exactly that. And I've seen him on a few occasions. And uh, there was elements about myself that I, I was... I, I was not able to access meditation or, or these elements, but on September 7th, I went and saw Miguel, and uh, when I walked in, um, Miguel uh, said, hey, he had heard of my brother's passing, and he was sorry to hear that, and he, he just asked me to sit down, and he said, we'll talk after, and um, he goes, um, let's get you some rest, and so I laid back, and covers your eyes and has some energy rocks or what have you. Um, and, uh, and he's also performs acupuncture. So he said, I want to open up your heart. And so as I laid down, he, he placed a acupuncture needle in the center of my chest and a few more in my ears. And he, you know, uh, touched me on the shoulder and said, I'll see you in a little while and left the room. And I kind of searched there for a moment, you know, um, you know, okay, am I, am I going to meditate? Am I going to rest? What, what's going to happen on this experience? I was open for, for anything because I really do enjoy seeing him. And um, a minute or two went by. And as I'm looking at these images that are passing through my closed eyes and shadows and shapes and stuff, um, I see some white images and flashes and I'm thinking, you know, okay, am I going to meditate? Um, I think it's common that we experience this and I'm seeing dark flashes and so forth. And um, three or four minutes go by and I, I realize that I'm heavy breathing, just, you know, like I, I've got to get this under control. Like I, I need to rest and rest my mind. And um, right as that happened, I, I see a, a, a dark, you know, kind of configuration in front of my eyes and I realize at that second that I'm with my brother um, and he's holding me and um, you could only imagine what kind of you know sensory feeling that was and um, and my mother's there as well and I don't see them but I know them that they are there and um, I'm just erupting with emotion, um, tears, uh, and I'm weeping. And my brother says to me, um, I was wrong about God. It's beautiful here. And I'm, Michael, I'm not high. I'm not asleep. I'm not dreaming. I'm, I'm laying there. My back's uncomfortable from this, you know, table I'm laying on. And I'm weeping because my brother's holding me and comforting, comforting me, um, uh, telling me that it's beautiful here. And my brother was agnostic and probably understandably so, um, you know, after losing both of his children and, and feeling robbed and maybe mad with God. He was an advocate for that belief, but he 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 was not, um, you know, a cheerleader for for God. And um, he steps back away from me, and and he reveals where he's at, and it's heaven. And my experience that's being downloaded to me, almost as if I were to send you a 
a, a file with important data in it. You know, the instant you receive it, you've captured all of this data at one time. Um, he allows me to look inside heaven and it is beautiful. Um, and heaven is simply um, a continuous strand of, of energy, like a thread that continuously bends back upon itself in an in infinite array, you know, through all of the universes. And um, my, my experience was, you know, kind of just like, you could imagine elation, but at the same time, I'm conscious of, holy shit, look at, you know, what's this, you know, I'm really at a loss of, of where I'm at. And as I'm weeping, you know, um, I'm absorbing this blue flame of energy that when you look at it, it becomes lucid and clear. And it becomes known as this data comes into me that it's only love. And it's only truth that is flowing through um, this energy. And so I asked my brother, uh, where's dad? My dad had passed a few years ago. Um, and uh, where are the boys? Referring to my, my brother Cliff's sons. And he says, they're just a little further down. And what comes to me at that time is that there's just this process of knowing and absorbing this love and this truth that continues our journey after we are passed into a forever journey of knowing truth and love um, in its purest sense. And right about then, my mom, well, right about then I, I see a kind of a flash image again of, of, of darkness. And I'm thinking consciously, is this bad? Is this, is this the evil? Am I, what am I confronting here? And that's when my mom steps up and my mom's there and she's not, she's not consoling. She's kind of irritated. And she just, you know, says to me, it's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's going to be wonderful. And what I get from that, as I was judging, you know, these white flashes of being angelic or, you know, spiritual or what have you, to having a dark image meaning evil or bad, what was given to me is that there's no such thing as bad in all of God's universes ever. And it's just what we as humans perceive as unknown. And it was instantly given to me that these elements um, of good and bad and right and wrong and, you know, that are, are conditions that are, the human animal fills in when there's not enough information, when there's unknown. And my my journey after that ended just with me trying to reach up and and embrace my brother. You know, I literally reached up and went to hug him. And obviously, he's he's not there as I'm just weeping and weeping like like that's coming out of me. And I was filled with a sense of not only wholeness and completion but just outright pure joy and understanding. And, and Michael, you know me well enough through the things that I've written. And, you know, I, I know I've been on a journey writing and, and figuring out a way to share myself. But this experience is, is profoundly affected. And, um, and I'm taken to trying to understand what... What does a person do when he's given this kind of information? Why me? And um, 
I, this is what I'm trying to sort out at this time. I know it's a lot to, to sink your teeth into, Michael, but... No, um, no, no, it's it, it it's perfect. I'll, uh, I'll just recap on, on some of the stuff. So you're not the only one. So the literature in out-of-body experiences and near-death experiences all correlate to the same story. So um, I'll share with you privately some of the things that you can research, but there are many different that there are hunt i've i'm a big researcher in this particular area many uh years ago for about two decades same experiences god truth love nothing but pure joy yeah and they, these moments and these experiences shake you to the core where you do become complete but a new found sense of wholeness and spirituality in it where do you share the message in and how do you reach uh, the larger audience to say, hey, it's true, it's real. Fantastic. And I, I smiled during one of the things you said where that dark image came up where it was dark and human beings, you said, we fill in the gaps of what we think is bad with the unknown. And literally I had that thought about six hours ago about the <laughs> unknown, the, like the, most of our fear, most of our suffering is got to do in the unknown and as a as a species, as a very intelligent species, we fill in the gaps subconsciously with all the information. But I want to go back a little bit. What did the healer say? What was his reaction when when you came out of this experience? Miguel is uh, he's quiet, um, and I did not say anything to him, and he did not inquire. Um, I was there for about forty minutes before he came back in. As I mentioned, I was uncomfortable and. I would imagine I sat there and reflected for at least 20 minutes until he came back in and then he continued with some therapy and I was probably with him for an entire hour. But um, that night I, on the, on the drive home, my wife asked how to go, you know, and I was, you want to know, you know, um, I, I, I can tell you. And um, it just poured out of me like, I could not believe what I just went through. But the next day, I, um, well, that night I came home and I, I kind of wrote contemporaneously my notes from the experience just to preserve them. And I, I want you to know, Michael, this is the first time that I've been, you know, recorded of, of sharing this experience. And I, for the same reason, felt strongly about doing that with you because um, I think it's important to, you know, to re record this and memorialize it um, while it's still so fresh. Um, but I reached out to Miguel and, and I did tell him that I had a really special experience, but um, he didn't ask what and I didn't provide for that kind of sanctity of keeping it pure, um, where I had, was set up for some kind of expectation. I really felt that you know, I, I've been given a gift and um, I've got to sort through it um, because the impression that it made on me and my heart and my, you know, how I relate to the world and, and, and why am I here, all of these normal human things that we ask. Um, I sought some, you know, counsel from a friend uh, in Dallas, Texas, who, you know, I shared the story with and she, she cried with me over the story and she she said, it's amazing. And she gets, and she's a healer as well. And she said, it's a zero point God event. And, um, I hadn't heard that term yet. And I, you know, questioned the same as you, what do I do with this thing? And she gave me some sage advice by saying one, enjoy it. You know, you had a God experience. You, you've seen and, and witnessed first person heaven and um, it will it will change your life forever and it has I'm sure it will um, and the second thing was is you know she just gave the advice of be it don't decide what you're going to do with this um, experience just yet just live into it live into the love and the truth that you've been shown and sort it out over time and so I've spent the last almost 30 days now before talking with you now, um, kind of sorting, but um, 
it's been a real release of of writing, um, which is a cathartic exercise that I've used in the practice that I put forth in the two books on this day and derivation. But um, uh, I've got the spirit, Michael. It's running through me like I can't. It's it's deep in my veins, man. And I'm. I think you know me well enough in the content and the contrarian aspects of my writing um, that I question a lot of things. I don't question God. I strongly question, you know, humanity. And um, it's got me writing again. I uh, I think there's a third book coming, and uh, I'm not going to turn this into a coaching session, but I recommend <laughs> you I, I recommend you reach out to as many people have had uh, a similar experience and gather their stories and put together the third book um, where they can share their stories in the book, if that makes sense. Um, it does. I've seen a few things and I've kind of trying to keep my thoughts pure until I get everything out of me that I think that I can assemble into some kind of conversation. Again, I'm, I'm not here to be a town crier, but um, I've been given some uh, information that I understand this has happened. I mean, it's biblical. It's happened to Isaiah. It's happened to John. It's uh, happened to Job. Um, and there was that which they needed to deal with that information that God had given them. It's happened and, to uh, it's happened to millions of people around the world, it and a lot of and because it's so personal and so visceral, I, I've got my own personal experiences, not with near death experiences, but I recently had a podcast where I talked a little bit about it, where I had a moment, yeah, about five years ago, uh, it wasn't anything like what you had, but what happened afterwards and how it changed me as a person in my core was the realness of it. So regardless whether it was similar to a dream where it was a great dream, it was a great image, but it, it, if it changed me as a person after it, it, yeah. it doesn't matter the moment, it means the person who's changed after the fact. Now, was it different than a dream or was there any similarities of that? You know how dreams can be very, very visceral and it can be very amazing. Um, and you come out of the dream and you're like, wow, that was amazing. What was the differences or similarities between what you had and a dream? my personal experience with dreams is that I don't remember them and it's frustrating, you know, and I know I dream. And the second I have, you know, uh, awakened consciousness, I'm like, I can't remember. Um, it's ongoing and has driven me crazy for years. Um, I remember lying there and just kind of like, I'm with my brother and like, uh, seriously, I, you know, I'm, I'm taking a, a mental count, a mental clock of, am, did I, have I gone somewhere? Um, am I still here? I'm, I can feel the table. I feel the cloth, the sheet on top of me. I feel the stones and, and, you know, my eye covering, um, just to kind of check, you know, my back's hurting. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm have some kind of discomfort. I'm awake. Um, and how can you question that experience other than, um, as it being real and true. And to your, to your point and to the experiences that you've had in others is that, um, you know, I, I think my takeaway was people are gonna think I'm fucking crazy. You know, I mean, like I, I understand like that kind of information put out there to people who are unfamiliar or, 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 or pre you know, those people with preconceived notions of how, you know, you know, normal people act and, you know, I, that's never happened to me. So that can't be real, um, experiences it, that, that came up to me and, it, and I'm still sorting through that, um, Michael. And I, I honestly wanted to kind of validate the story through you, with you. Um, I don't, I don't have any angle to pursue other than a, and it's not a burden as in a, in, in a negative connotation but I'm burdened with knowledge that I think is helpful. And I don't know who I'm going to find that it will help, but I know it will help somebody. And I, and I'm you already helped me. To... Yeah. You've, you've already, you've, you've already okay. helped me and you've validated some of the thoughts I've been having lately myself. And when you talked about love and truth, the, the two highest aspects of anything where people are trying to attain 
consciously, subconsciously, they're, they're the element, like even that there, that's enough to say, wow, that knowledge is very strong. But to talk about the negative aspect of as a species, if we don't understand something, we, we go to it's bad. Like that, I can't even put that into words exactly what that means to me, but it makes sense to myself. I mean, I can't yeah. even articulate it. I'm lost for words because well, me, I, I know it intuitively. I, I just know it intuitively what you said. And what I'm saying is that information, you can't think about that. That's not something where you're walking along and you go, wow, I just put the piece. That, that's higher knowledge. That, that, that there is worth its weight as in, in gold. And the beautiful part of the beautiful yeah. part about it, Michael, was uh, that it was simple. Um, it, love and truth is just it's simple and it's pure, and it's distorted in, in, in our animal and in, in, in human because we relate to truth as something that has overwhelming evidence um, or popular opinion or you know uh, disproven or proven by you know a method of some kind of scientific effect, um, and then love is. Is, is used for so many things, you know, because I, you know, I, I, I love peaches. I, I like to love bananas. I don't know. But in the purest sense of each of those things, it's, it's a, the human animal makes up shit. We make things up all the time. Um, and I think, and we're the only species that does it. And, and I understand that it's, there's, we're, we have fear, which again, this experience is, disappeared fear for me. Not that I, I'm not afraid of dying. I'm in really enjoying the living process. But Michael, what was given to me is that before we were human, we were not human. And when we die, we're, we're not human. It's, it's kind of a, an off ramp, a, a sideshow of experience that God wanted us to have. And I know that this information downloaded into me in a few moments is true and it was given to me in the name of love as a pure like you know in the most pure form and i you know i relate to it as other animals and you know we're all we all have a survival um mode you know a a small fish runs like hell swims like hell away from a bigger fish or a shark you know because they don't want to die it's it's instinctive an animal and humans just have a creative mechanism to manifest things that aren't true because of fear. And one of them is the fear of dying. And um, I, I, I enjoy the living. I enjoy the abundance around us. I enjoy everything, you know, uh, even my upsets. I enjoy, you know, you know, we enjoy our upsets and we don't want to die. But what was given to me is that we all go, every single one of us. Everything that's happened, nothing has ever bad happened. There have been, you know, pl planets collide and the whole galaxy swallowed into black holes. And, you know, there's lions who eat antelopes. You know, nothing bad has ever happened in God's universe. And that, I take that on. I, I, I can't even totally unpack that yet, Michael. Um, that nothing's bad has ever happened. It's just the judgment of humans to determine good and bad. Dark and means evil and light means, you know, angelic elements is just a human condition. What do you think the physicality of, I'm not going to say, you know, everyone thinks the physicality of heaven in terms of there's a man upstairs, there's a cloud where people are dancing around. What was your take on the the space or the energy or the frequency or how it operates? Is there any words you could contextualize? Yeah. That? Um, it's just blue light energy. There's no stairway or gates or a man with a beard and a tan um, pointing you to heaven or hell. It's just not what I experienced. Yeah. Um, and it is, it is it's energy and and i thought back of things that i've learned in the bible you know and you know i am the truth i am the light and i am the way um and i think back in the bible um you know that energy you know always was and always will be 
um, and we, you know, we were made in God's image. And it, it just occurs to me that it's the arrogance of man, of the species, to think that a God who's created everything in, in the universe, in all universes, looks like me and you. Um, because our image and who we are, Michael, we are fucking energy. That's all we are. And that capability of love and truth is what runs through all of us. Yeah, I I had that thought six hours ago with the image of God and the exact same, this, this is freaking me out because what you're saying is the thoughts I had uh, just before uh, we jumped on um, about six hours ago. As a species, yeah, we when we talk to Christian, I interviewed someone uh, regarding the Bible the other day, and it was very interesting to hear her take, and she had some fantastic wisdom. And one of the things that we do as a species is we make up not stories, but we use the image of if God's going to look like us because it's it's our interpretation of what that divine being is. But it's formless; there's no form. And then there's two different gods. There's the God with the big G which is the creator, the, the, the number right. one. Then there are thousands of, of little gods, which, which is the small Gs, whether it be Jesus or whether it be enlightened beings or whether it be this, right. that, and the other, and they're different, different images. So I think we get confused with the image of the white-bearded man, and, and that's, a sub, that's a programming of our culture. So we're programmed by our culture with the images that we associate divinity with. For example, you could be the next Jesus Christ with your like. What I'm saying is, there's there's so many experiences, but we label them with images. But when we drop the image, it's formless energy and light, truth and love. It's it all makes well, sense. It all makes sense. Well, I feel, you know, I, I want to say that I do feel called on, and um, I know I'm I've been special a, a special human. It's kind of hard for me to adopt that kind of ownership of, of my sentiments around that. There's a humility to it. Um, but what was given to me is that we are made in this image, which is love and truth. And we all have this, Michael. We are all on an ascension plan. We are all going there. And we've devised things over years and centuries and you know f through controls and whatever reasons that the bible and other you know um uh, manuscripts have have led to various religions um but that there is an ascension plan for all of us this is an experience that god intended us to have and we should have experience but some of us get it for four days and some of us get it for four years or 40 years or, you know, 104 years. Um, it's an experience that God wanted us to have, regardless of time, which does not exist outside of a human construct. Mm. And, you know, the religions and the, the, the great things that religions have done for humanity, which there are plenty, there are equally disrupting elements about the judgment of of religions and and so forth that are counter to love and truth but they're behaviors that have been given to us um for centuries and so we behave in those constructs and here i am going to be a guy that's going to say some things counterintuitive to what most people have been raised with and um I know that's, I know it's coming, but we're all on the same ascension plan. Yeah. We and might just be on different floors. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's the, the 3d world, the 4d world, the 5d world, all the way up into multiple different, different worlds. I want to yeah. take it back a little bit about Cliff's, um, religious bents with agnosticism. So you're saying yeah. it doesn't matter which direction or which path we actually take will still lead us there because it's our experiences ultimately that we either, you know, people say, oh, we, we chose to be here at this time or we chose to have these experiences on a higher level. So regardless of his, what he did or what his beliefs were, he's, everyone still makes it at the end because it's just a, a quote unquote game. 
what are your thoughts yeah, on that? It's, I think there's an experience, and I, I, I'm because it wasn't given to me, it's still unknowable. I still have a million questions, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, it's it, there is there's no other. This is what's so beautiful and simple about my experience is that there's there's just no other element for us as energetic beings um, made in God's image. <clears throat> Yeah. Um, that would say otherwise. And do it's you, simple. Do you think your experience as well, knowing that you, you've dealt with so many deaths recently, like in, in the last couple of years, that, you know, the Kerbal uh, um grief cycle, denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and at the end, the last one's acceptance. And then they come in different orders as well. But do you think this is a closing of of that or that loop or that hole in your heart has been healed somewhat so to speak what's your thoughts on on that i think i you know i, I miss my brother like i can't tell you how much I, I just almost impulsively want to call him and because i would call him at a certain time or in a certain place daily but you know i i understand you know maslow i understand a lot of scripture and you know, I, I write to a lot of effects, but my brother and every word I've ever written um, has been a soundboard for me. He's agnostic, you know, um, I'm not. Um, and those, you know, those counter points and opinions helped, you know, shape me. And that's what I love so much about my brother. So my healing you know, I, I wouldn't wish, you know, somebody to have a lot of experience with death, you know, on anybody. I, you know, it's, we all, you know, should enjoy this living opportunity, but, um, there is there. And I do see what you're saying, like, yeah, we can do anything we want and willy nilly, um, and still go to heaven. And I hate to say it, but the truth, the answer is, yeah. Um, there's, um, some constructs of, of about a, a civilization and our survival, that has developed us into who we are and what we have become. And, uh, but I understand the gravity of, of what I'm about to share um, includes that um, caveat of, of, well, I can go out and create havoc. Um, yeah, it's, it's unfortunate, but it's God's experience that he's had planned for us. Whether that experience is good or bad is a judgment of mine. You know, and I explained it like this. I don't think antelope are out there petitioning, you know, some kind of animal kingdom council to bar lions from their territory. Um, it it's just happens in this animal world, which we exist in. We are the only species who deviate from some other species and thinks that we are um, a whole domain. Yeah. In regards to animals, here's my opinion on it. On recently, here's my current opinion on the on the animal situation. As yeah. a human species, we look to the animal kingdom on oh, we we look at their death, like the 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 lion eats the antelope. We look at the death moment, but we don't think about the many years or the or the, or so much time that the animal has just chilled in nature in their own environment, walking around, eating, foraging, doing whatever they do. Even cows in a farm that are bred for slaughter. They spend many years fattening up, chilling out. And then, yes, the moment of death is quite painful when it comes. And, and we're the executioner of that death in a factory farm even. Yeah. But we're, 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 we're not thinking about their existence before the death. It's not like they're born two seconds later, they're dead. They, they have, an, they have a, an experience. And so do we have an experience as well. And maybe it's not the experience that as... Everything that we put on to other people is coming from the human perspective. If we take that element off, we can understand that they might be in bliss for three years and then have a have a shit death. But yeah, that three years, wow, that was fucking grouse. Like we don't know what an animal right. animal actually thinks or goes through. Um, anyway, that that but that we, could be a possibility. Michael, you think about it. We don't. It's hard to conceive this notion of you and I not thinking like a human. OK, um, that's a hard one to detach and then have a conversation about like, oh, this is, you know, because we are just wearing this human suit right now. 
It's a good for suit. A period. Though. It's a good suit. It's a, it's pretty good <laughs> for fifty something. <laughs> but you know, it's it's. You, you, I got to wrap my head around. Nothing bad has ever, ever, ever happened in God's universe, and that's here I am, man. And whatever happens, it's actually forgotten in in the in the his story. And when I say his story, I mean history. Um, mm -hmm. It's gone. It's gone into. It's gone into the the truth. Well, it's gone. Like nothing that happened a hundred years ago. Uh, yes, yeah, some people still might be have those those effects. I'm not saying the effects don't, but what I'm saying is the every single person that was alive in the 1800s, I'm pretty sure is dead unless they're 121. 1800s are over and yes the effects of the 1800s are still carrying on our culture so the physicality of things don't change but the spirituality of the people that were there the animals and people they're all gone into energy and light as you say with the experience what's the idea what's what did you get with reincarnation so when you said about your dad and your two nephews when they said they're a little further down the line yeah. What, what did you pick up from that? What, 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 how did you unpack that? What, what do you mean by that? My brother, I, I, this is what I took is like he, and my mom is, is with him. So she died in April. Um, and my brother died in uh, August. And what I gather from that is being further on is that um, imagine what my mom said to me everything's going to be okay we're concerned for them and we pray and hope no hope you know jesus welcomes them and all of these things that we ritualistically say and pray i mean it's in prayers are heard um but imagine absorbing so much truth and love that you knew that everything that you were going to leave behind was going to be just okay and fine you know michael one day you and i are going to be there and go and we're going to depart from all that we loved in life and willfully pursue truth and, and love so and consumed imagine the universe is full of knowledge of going from not knowing to knowing that we are journey we are journeying somewhere new that god has us intended after we are done here and that's the experience. I, there's no other conclusion that was shared with me other than that. We're all going there. All do, you, of us. do you think when they said further down the line, I, I interpreted that maybe they've gone back into the game of life and, and reincarnated. But so, for example, we, we're living that in That did our, not come to me. Okay. Yeah, that I, did not come to me. If we're living in our flesh suits, is there a part of us that is still connected to the, the light realm? You know, does that make sense? You know, people say they're higher self. So like we can't be in heaven and on earth at the same time. So we have to die to get to heaven and we have to be born again to leave heaven. So I, I wonder if there's a connection of my biggest question is, when we died, we go back to the source. But when we're at the source, do we have a moment where we go, okay, we're going back in. I'm deep diving back into the game, ready to go. Yeah. Let's go. Okay, shit, Down let's two. do it. And, and, and the third question I've got is, I believe there could be a period of maybe of an energy where you go and rest. There's a lot of people that say they rest in heaven for, could be years, decades, centuries. And that soul rest is just the training ground to complete a game or a mission in life. But I think it all does come back to truth, love, and experiences. I don't know. I, I do too, and 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 I was not privileged to to that kind of knowledge, other than it's it continues. We are we are destined to continue through God's experiences. We are just are in this form for now, and we will leave this form, whether it is a a rebirth, a reorientation of a human, um, or, you know, again, I have a sense that it's a takeaway from an earthly experience because we also humans can understand, um, distance or space in and of itself or, or how it works. But imagine having that knowledge being instantly given to you. Um, 
the, the reprieve is for us as humans, though, and what I really took away from my experience was peace, knowing. I went from not knowing to knowing a lot more than I ever thought I would in my entire life. Um, and it happened in a few moments. And, um, and my next steps are, you know, to process it in my human head and try not to be totally absorbed in, in that, in my ego or uh, my judgment. And, you know, I, I, I've written two other books not to try to tell people what to do with their lives. And I'm sure I'm not going to try to tell people what to do with their lives and, 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 and whatever comes next for me, other than I have a story, a true story, firsthand. And um, I, I would like to seek more counsel, as you're suggesting, as, as meeting and talking with others. Um, I've Definitely. shared it with the, just a, a few people, Michael, and but I've already had some people call me back and go, I need to know more. I need, I'm like, I can give what I can give, but I will, um, I will help you put together this book <laughs> and no, I'll, I'll set up, I'll save everything up. Okay. The way I see it is a jigsaw. You've got one piece. Now we don't know how big the jigsaw is, but uh, I'll, let's say it's a, a 50 piece jigsaw, get the 49 other pieces from other people and you'll start to connect the dots and there'll be a theme like it, but not just that it will actually resonate more of your story because they'll say the things that you experienced over and over again. And you're going to be like, wow, this is not, it's not just me. This is this, it becomes more real. Once you have, you have real testimony of people that is something's moved them in the core and they just not like it's beyond language and it's beyond, it's beyond anything. And it's not got to do with the brain, even the heart. They just, it's a knowing and you don't need to sell it to somebody or it's, this is why right. it's very private to people because there's no selling involved. It's a, it's a, it's a spiritual zero point God experience that you've had, which is, uh, it's amazing. My question, which my audience is probably thinking is, can you go back and do the same experience? Can you go see Miguel and put the rocks on your eyes and go to the same setting? How, are you going to try that? What do you think? I will see Miguel again. And, um, I will tell you this, every time I've seen Miguel, I've had some different iteration of a healing and I've always felt very good in the, uh, the experience. And um, a friend of mine said, do it again. You know, like, I don't know, maybe, maybe you're accessing something and I don't know, you know, Michael, I don't, I don't study chakra therapy. I just participate in it. Um, I, Cause I believe it. I don't want, I don't want to necessarily adopt somebody else, others belief, you know, you need to uh, interview, you, know, you, part, you, you need to interview Miguel and he needs to talk. Cause I think he could be the secret Jesus in this. I think he's the undercover. He's the undercover shaman that knows what's going on. And he's got the access to the gates of heaven and he's not talking, he's not telling anyone about it. I reckon he's, I reckon he's, he's in on the, he's in on the game. He's in on the game. Yeah. For sure. I, I, I'll let you know what he says when I tell him that and he's a, uh, He's a humble human man, and and I love him for how he is and who he is, and and and, and again, he he accepts me, um, and um, I don't know. There's the spirit. You alluded to this in your in your previous comment or question that you know what about our spiritual energies and their connectedness before we were human and after we we passed through. Um, I believe that you know like like a like a particle of light it continues forever it doesn't stop um and you know i i think that we've always been and we always will be and this is a an experiential side sideshow of of some kind of lesson or learning that was important for us on our journey and and you can imagine where we're gonna reconstitute ourselves at some other point and um uh, again michael i just uh, I, you your, your conversation with me it's it's really been therapeutic for me and i've needed this oh, I really I've, need, I've needed it too so i think this is just a probably a, a good time to 
to wrap it, we'll probably have a part three in the future when the third book comes out, which I, is, uh, I have some more, yeah, I have some more things to share. I, I I'll get to you when great. I, I've, 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 come back I've, I've already got the title back. of the book because it's a title of uh, a book of mine that's coming out next year. I'm researching the book uh, at the moment, uh, totally opposite the personal development. The book is called questions. Okay. That's it. And, and answers we have so far would be the sub subtitle. So I think your book could be called questions as well. Just questions. I have a title. I have a title in mind. Okay. I have a title in mind. And, uh, I, I definitely I, we have to catch up and talk about this, but I want I want to see this in book form, and I want to know yeah. other people's experiences. But you could just use that to um, to help communicate the message that it's not it's not the Philip show, it's not the Philip right. show. It's it, this is a story that's been going on for a long time, and these are the current people that still live in that's had this experience and it gives me hope and it gives a lot if it can if it can reach one person today and say you know what it's gonna be at what your mum said like that's it it's gonna be okay like that's so powerful that's so powerful so thanks mum you want to say thanks mum that's that's a yeah thanks mum it's great advice but um (laughs) would there be a last message you want to leave my audience before we sort of wrap up and what would be the last Uh, message you know what i I do i i want to tell you that I'm accessible. I'm, I'm very interested in, in understanding more. And I, I would like to, you know, stay in, 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 co- in the conversation. I think what I have can help. And I think there's going to be people that I reach with, you know, this message and, and others that, uh, I want people to know that I'm accessible and they can contact me. I, 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 I want to know more. Where can they, where's the best place people can, can reach out to you? You know, I'm I'm most accessible um, either through my uh, my web page at uh, authorphilipgabbard.com. Um, I'm uh, heavy usage on uh, Instagram at authorphilipgabbard.com. No, strike out the dot com at authorphilipgabbard. Um, but seriously, I, I it's I understand that you know conversations and stories like these can can spread pretty quickly, but, um, I would, I would love to be in conversation if you've had an experience as I have. Yeah. Perfect. Now people that, um, just to recap as well, before Phil had this spiritual experience, now he's on this, another path on his, uh, multifaceted journey. He has done two fantastic books. One is this day. Um, Phil reached out to me when he released his first book. And I have to say one of the best books I've ever read and very different as well. So if you want to know who Phil was a couple of years ago in his story, read this day. It's a game changer. And and then the new one, Thrivation, which is, again, a great book. So go out there, uh, buy those books. I have done a summary on this day. Um, so you can check that out on Best Book Bits as well. But Philip, thank you for being on the show. Thanks for sharing and being open. And I'm looking forward to this new path that you're walking and in, in the in the journey and thank you for sharing the experiences and we'll definitely have you back on again with some more wisdom to share with my audience so i, I appreciate thank you from you the bottom up. of my heart thank you very much michael no problem at all thanks for sharing speak to you soon to my audience check out phil gabbard <laughs>